The Speed Vision GT Championship competitors descend this week on Grand Rapids, Michigan in the heart and the heat of the street race section of the schedule. Two by two, they come to the rumble on the river. We should be very strong as far as getting the power down, getting out of the turn. We should be strong through the turn. It's just how quick can we get up the speed down the straight. An equally impressive group will be looking to break through for their first win of 1999. Bill Cooper and John Heinrichy have brought brand new potent Chevy Corvette C5. And rookie points leader George Biscuits three trips to the podium. He's been thirsting for more. All the guys up front have been really good and and yeah, we're trying for our first win. We'd love to get one. This is a great track for it, for the Porsche, and we'll see if we can do it. Today, we'll also take you inside the cockpit as Desiree Wilson and Dorsey Schrader call the action as they drive through it. It'll be one full hour of breakneck speed through the streets of downtown Grand Rapids next here on Speed Vision. Michigan, Scott Brayton Memorial Street Circuit welcomes the Speed Vision GT competitors for the seventh round of the Speed Vision GT Championship. Hi everybody, I'm Greg Creamer and alongside this week is a gentleman very familiar with this series but from pit lane, Calvin Fish. And Calvin, the points championship getting very interesting up front. Well, as we look at the points chase, Greg, you see Bobby Archie there with a healthy 18-point lead based on his two wins at the first two rounds. Then the next four drivers separated by only 16 points. Rounding out the top ten, you see Reese Cox who had a great qualifying run yesterday. We take a look at the Manufacturer Championship. Porsche has gone to the four by a pretty healthy margin over Chevrolet, BMW, Toyota, and Acura actually there in fourth. We're talking manufacturers, and that means it's time for John Bisignano and our Manufacturer Spotlight. Today's spotlight is on the beautiful Corvette C5 driven by Bill Cooper. Bill, I understand that this car actually arrived from General Motors SPO as a kit. Yes, that's true. Uh, the car came in just in kit form, and we've spent time probably the last six months putting it together at uh, Sports Fab in uh, Milford, Michigan. Now, the heart of every Corvette is the motor. I understand it's virtually a stock 350. Yes, basically, the rules only allow us to have a stock engine. Uh, it's a 350 putting out approximately 400 horsepower. There are some aerodynamic panels on here from a manufacturer. Right. Part of the kit, we had a front air dam put in. We have a little spoiler in the rear, and we have some... Uh, side plates on the car, but uh, it might be offered for the street maybe next year, but it's subtle aerodynamic features. Tell us about the brakes. Brakes are wonderful on this car. We have uh, basically have taken the stock front calipers of the Corvette and put them on the rear, and we've uh, upgraded the fronts to be Alcon, and the car really stops well. Well, Bill, it seems to be working. They qualified fourth overall, and even more important, they're faster than all the Corvettes here in Grand Rapids. Thanks, John, and we mentioned Calvin Fish is in the booth instead of in the pits, and that's because the guy is normally in the booth while he's doing something else. And Speed Vision's Connie Willis has caught up with Dorsey Schrader. In the Saline Home Improvement Car, we have a man who loves to drive and a man who loves to talk. It's Dorsey Schrader. Dorsey, can you do both at the same time? Sure, you can do both at the same time. I can even get a little drink every if I want one. I got to thank Steve Saline, Tim Allen for giving me this hot rod and opportunity you know, I've been talking about these guys all year, how good they are. Well, we're going to see how good they are now. All right, good luck. Have fun. Well, the Speed Vision Legends of Motorsports car has been very entertaining this year. We welcome a new driver, one of the most successful women drivers of all time. I'm Desiree Wilson, and I'm driving the Speed Vision GT BMW M Coupe. I always find one of the most difficult things um, sitting on the grid is uh, waiting for to roll off. One of the big reasons is you get, you know, very apprehensive right at the stage because the start of the race is probably the most dramatic and most difficult time. Everybody just seems to want to win the race on turn one, so they get a little bit wild, 
tyres aren't uh, warm yet, the brakes aren't hot, and everybody just kind of overdoes it, usually in turn one. So we're still going to be a little bit more careful and just uh, bide our time here. It's a long race, 45 minutes. Well, it's great to have Desiree back behind the wheel, and John Bisignano has caught up with one of the most successful drivers as of late, our pole winner. Peter Kitchak hopes to go from this fine pole position to his third overall win of the season, second in a row. Now he's won with both motors, the 3.6 and the 3.8. Now, Peter, when you run the 3.6, you can run 100 pounds lighter, but you've chosen the 3.8 here in Grand Rapids. Well, we took... we. We're going to use a 3.8 liter motor because it has more torque and we can get out of each of the turns much better. And that's very important when you're running through the city streets. It absolutely is. With all of these big cars around us, we've got to have everything that we can do to get out of the turns well. Well, Peter needs this win. His greatest competition is from Bobby Archer right next to him on the grin. He needs the points. He's 18 behind for the championship. Well, Peter mentioned the nuances of this track, Calvin. Let's take a look at our Toyota track map. Well, this is the second of three consecutive street circuits, Greg. Long front straightaway heading down into turn one. Very bumpy there, but good overtaking possibilities. There's some 90-degree turns. They come out of turn four as it changes surface. Heading down into turn five, another good spot for overtaking. Very tight from there on out and lots of bumps. And you hear the engines come to life with the command to start engines. And look at that. A great shot from Dez's car. She's revving the engine. You can see the vibration going right through these chassis. Very high horsepower indeed. When we come back, we'll take a look at our starting lineup. Welcome back to the second annual West Michigan Grand Prix. You can see the cars are on the track. Let's get right to our starting grid. In the front row, Peter Kitchick, another great qualifying effort in the Q8 entry, and Bobby Archer, the points leader alongside. Row two shows Dorsey Schrader in the Speed Vision, Celine Mustang, and Bill Cooper in the new Les Stanford Corvette C5. Row three, Reese Cox in the MTI Corvette C5, and John Heinrichsey in a new Rowley's Pennzoil Corvette C5. Row four has Pete Halsman, the Honda of America race team, NSX, and Randy Roach in the GOAT Porsche, Porsche RSR. Row number five has Kermit Upton in the Mountain Autosport BMW, and Scotty White in the Tom Henry Chev Corvette C5. Row number six has Desiree Wilson in the Speed Vision Legends BMW, and 06, Trip Goolsby in the Net Nova Porsche. Row number seven is George Biscop in the Control Solutions Porsche, and 94, David Shard in the TRD Toyota Super Turbo. Row number eight has Dan Kellermeyer in another Raleigh's Penzo Corvette C5 and Dennis Peterson in the Peterson Motorsports Corvette. Row number nine has Terry Lackey in the Corvettes of Houston, Corvette LT4, and 95 Jeff Dimitri in the HP Motorsports Mustang. Row number 10 has Bob Taylor in the McClure Concrete Corvette C5, and 31 Bruce Kalin in the Viper Speed Dodge Viper. Row number 11 has Tommy Safar in the Tsunami Entry and Rick DiOrio in the Danielson Mustang. And as we take a look at the rest of the field, Cochran Swift, Ripley, Bradley, DeMonte, Noack, Brown, Oppenheimer, and Deffier rounds out our Porsche starting grid. On board here, you got a good look there with Bill Cooper. We are also going to be on board with 39 Heinrichsy. Here's Pete Halsmer in that Honda of America race team actor NSX. Kermit Upton, who's been very exciting this season. And on board number 30, Desiree Wilson, of course, in that machine. On board with George Biscup. We're going to have some great looks for you here. And uh, Dorsey Schrader, we're going to have a face cam and a forward cam. It's going to be great. And the field, Calvin, coming out of that final turn and getting ready for the green. It happens a little bit farther down the front straight. There's the starter. I'm out of that final turn, Greg, turn 13. Field is forming up nicely. See Archer on the left side. Kitchen gets the jump there. On board with Kitchak, and you can see he got on the throttle very nicely. He's got that very potent Viper on his left shoulder. But Kitchak using the brakes of that Porsche to great effect right the inside. Wow! And Dorsey Schrader and Bill Cooper get well, together. Back in turn one, you saw that. I don't know if Cooper couldn't get stopped or what. I don't think my car is hurt. Palmer's by cleanly. I'm going to take a lap and ride and see. Oh, well, we can see a little bit of damage to the left rear corner of Dorsey's car, and Lackey in the Corvettes of Houston machine off, and a fire from the right front corner of that machine. Great response by the corner workers. We've seen that car kind of braking problems at Road Atlanta earlier in the year, Greg, and that may be uh, another reoccurrence of that problem, but Bill Cooper really committed to that move on Dorsey awfully early. Dorsey turned into the corner, they made side-to-side -side contact, and uh, Dorsey had a half spin there, kept it going, but lost a lot of ground to the leaders. And speaking of leaders, let's go to that battle. And whoop, number 47 has gone around. That's Bob Taylor, and uh, he looks like he got away with it, waited for the rest of the field to cycle through. 
Boy, he's got to do that 18-point racing <laughs> turn here in these narrow streets, but he gets it gathered up and away. And as Desiree Wilson said, a lot of the drivers are really anxious. The brakes aren't warm, the tires aren't warm, and uh, you see guys making a lot of mistakes in the early going. But Kitchett, seeing there, leaping over the bump there as he comes out of that corner, and Archer in hot pursuit, followed by Cooper. And take a look at the lead that those two have opened up already. Kitchak and Archer drawing away from Cooper. And I think that's Reese Cox running in fourth, having a great early go here. And Heinrich right there in fifth. There's Halsmer and there's Dorsey Schrader. He's coming back, the uh, waving yellow. Let's go back down and take a look at what happened in that first corner. Well, here you see Dorsey's mid-track. And then you see Cooper committing early. You see the two leaders going through the corner. And there's really just no room. Very tight there on the entry to turn one. And here we see on board, Bill, all the way down the inside, Dorsey's turning in. And too much commitment at this stage of the race, but Bill got away with it. Let's hope there's no damage to the left side. There you see it from Heinrich's viewpoint. Bill Cooper just in the side of Dorsey, and I think it's Reese Cox going through there on the inside. Oh, and Paul Brown and the HP Motorsports Celine. That's the new Celine Mustang bodywork is in the pits. Taylor, another problem down into turn one in the McClure Concrete entry, and uh, you were talking about it, that it might be that, uh, that the brakes are just not coming around this track, very hard on brakes. Back to the leaders, Peter Kitchak and Bobby Archer, and this really is the points battle, Archer Legion, but Kitchak certainly has been the driver with the momentum as of late. Well, they made a tire rail change earlier in the season to that Porsche, gave them a little bit more rubber on the back end, and coming into these street courses, it's really been effective. It's been very effective. There's Dorsey Schrader, damage to the left rear corner of the car. The question is, how far into the car has it gone? This is what I do good. Straight away. Little flag up here, can't pass. Brake bias is way too much to the rear. Once I pass this wreck, I'm going to try to work on that. Now, by turning this knob here, if you can see it, I'm putting more front brake in. Hopefully, I'll be able to dial the chassis in a little better. Well, again, that's managing the car as the race unfolds and using the tools at your disposal. There's that damage to the left rear. Oh, and Halsmer is off. It looked like it was just jerking a little more, and all of a sudden, it just got a lot worse, and boom. Apparently, damage to the rear end of that car, differential, something like that, Calvin, and he has gone down on the runoff and has stopped. Yeah, what it sounded like Pete was talking about is he's coming off the corners, the car's pulling one way to the other, and uh, that typically indicates something in the back end of the car, Greg, as you mentioned. Corner workers quickly to the scene, but it looks as though Halsmer's day is done, and uh, that is a tough, tough break. Let's go a little bit further back in the pack, uh, the 0-3 of uh, Tommy Safarn. Oh, a bump there between that's the uh, that's the tsunami corvette and bernie cochran in the pontiac and uh, that was a very dicey moment indeed looks like everybody makes it and uh, bernie cochran that car is not a full out world challenge car yet in the gt division that's uh, like a firehawk car that they're upgrading as the season goes but on these street tracks it'll probably be more competitive than we have seen it uh, for the rest of the season. He's feeling pretty racy, I think. Well, he's used to this close action, Greg, coming from the background that he does, but that vet really took his line away, and they did touch wheels there. That's Walt Swick in the BMW, number 29, behind Cochran. Let's go back and take a look at it. Well, there you see it from a different angle. You see that the 0, zero car of Cochran really got into the zero 3 almost turned him sideways, but a nice job of controlling the slide. Yep, Tommy Safar, a nice job of control. Cochran hustling that uh, that machine very nice job we go on board with our leader peter kitchak in the q aiden real estate group entry we'll be back in just a minute welcome back to grand rapids a good look there at george biscop and the control solutions porsche right behind him is trip goolsby then it's desiree wilson and behind her is kellemeyer in the c5 so you've got porsche porsche bmw and vet the manufacturer's uh, action in this one is awesome as are the uh, driver skills on display here goolsby having a great run fending off wilson and there's a good look at desiree and she is being pursued intensely here on board with desiree and down this long front straight here at grand rapids heavy heavy braking here cal oh and kellemeyer a big move makes it work So Des gives up the position, but you can see one of her exhaust pipes looks to be dragging, and I don't know if that's affecting the back pressure and maybe some of the horsepower. And Paul Brown, you saw that car in the pits earlier, and Biz is with him. Paul, your beautiful Celine Mustang should be out on the track, but what took it out, buddy? 
Well, apparently at the uh, the beginning of the race, with the track being just a little rough, the uh, on turn one, the uh, yellow flag came out. We got just a little bit of brake hop in the rear end. I was trying to get it shut down to keep from hitting anybody. And we broke the rear shock mount. It's a brand new car. We've only had a chance to run it at the events. Little testing time, and we're doing what we can. Tell everybody from Vancouver, guys. Oh, no doubt. Again, a look at uh, Terry Lackey's Corvettes of Houston car. We saw the problems earlier. Now some smoke emanating from the left front corner. And I don't know, that uh, is that brake fire area there or not? Nah, it looks like it's more coming from under the hood, doesn't it? Well, either way, it's not the type of thing you want to have a problem with going around these street circuits. I mean, you've got really tight corners, a lot of heavy braking and concrete walls. That's not a good combination, Greg. Tough, tough brake. Peter Kitchak up front. And they have opened up a pretty good margin. Kitchak and Archer here running 1-2. And the rest of the field, they're just sort of drifting away at this stage of the game. And Peter Kitchak, since mid-Ohio in, in particular, he has been virtually unstoppable. The car just working very well, and Archer doing everything he can to stay close. Yeah, he's been on a roll. He's had four finishes in the top four, including two wins, and uh, he's doing a great job. There we see a battle for fourth, and uh, Dorsey's joining the fray right now. We go on board with Dorsey, who apparently has managed the car a little bit here. As he closes in on Reese Cox. That's Heinrich, see another car up in front, in a very close battle for fourth. Oh, Reese Cox a little squirrely coming off the corner. And uh, we talked about Terry Lackey smoking badly earlier, and Biz, he's down in pit lane. Well, to me, it looks like a hose off the radiator or a big hole in the hose. They've got a lot of fluid coming from underneath the car, a lot of smoke coming out from the top of the car. They shut it off, guys. I think his day's over. Well, obviously, uh, this, this street track takes a lot of demands, and it's also pretty warm here, and that's obviously playing a role. There's a look at Reese Cox and Dorsey behind him, Calvin. And uh, Dorsey, we saw him working with the adjustments and the like. He's obviously sorted that car a little bit as we look at the front. Yeah, and look at Bobby Archer now really putting the pressure on Peter Kitchak and uh, doing a great job of the Viper. We've seen Archer be very patient throughout this season. He's got a couple of victories early and still looking for a podium finish here today. Maybe victory once again. One of Kitchak's great concerns here this weekend when we talked to him is he said, I asked him, with all the weight at the back of that Porsche, you'd think this car would be awesome coming off of these corners. He said, we did too, and it's working pretty well. I said, but we can't get the right gearing, and we don't have enough rev. We're lugging off the corners a little bit. That's one thing that Viper doesn't have to worry about is torque off the corners, and Archer putting it to great use right now. And here you see a battle for eight. Three different manufacturers, Optimum in the BMW, shot in the Toyota, and then you see White in that Corvette. Right in front of them is Randy Roach in the Porsche, and behind them just caught a glimpse of George Biscop, started 13th and is marching his way up into the top 10. And uh, you make the other uh, good point again, a great variety of manufacturers, and SCC really has done a nice job of equalizing this field. They put on great racing wherever you find them in the pack. It's been awesome, Greg. We've seen three different manufacturers win this season. We've seen the Viper Take 2, the Porsche, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the BMW with a pair apiece. It's been very close racing indeed. Good look there at Scotty White uh, as he continues to run very strongly in this top 10. And there's a good look at Randy Roach. Behind him is Kermit Upton. And Kermit Upton has been putting on a very good show all season. Let's ride with Mr. Excitement. Boy, Kermit, uh, if you remember him from uh, Road Atlanta, he loves racing side by each, and he is really working over Roach right now. Never forget that last lap when he went underneath the bridge and took Cooper and Archer at the same time. That was great to see side-by-side -side action. Here we see the leaders again, and the Viper of Archer is really putting the pressure on Kitchak right now. You see him really getting a little sideways coming out of there, Bobby, really trying to get the power down early on that big Viper V10. Lots of torque. I would suspect Archer carrying a lot more weight would like to get by Kitchak. And then, oh, with Peterson. Dennis Peterson in the Roar Corporation. Bet is looped it. That's down in that uh, turn one braking area. And that big bump over the bridge unsettles them badly. And uh, we'll be back. Great battle at the front. Welcome back to the Scott Brayton Memorial Street Circuit here in Grand Rapids. That battle for seventh continues to rage. And it has closed up. Whoa, lap traffic is uh, holding up Scotty White back there in the 10th uh, spot. But it is Roach, Upton, and Shart now. And that's uh, Defier in the Saline Mustang 
and Scotty White has been able to sneak by and very quickly closes back in on Sharp. Four different manufacturers now, Greg. We see the Porsche up front, then we see the BMW with Upton looking in his mirrors there, looking for David Sharp, maybe looking for an inside move, and then we see Scotty White in the vet. So these guys are really putting on a great show here today in the very tight confines of the streets of West Michigan. Very tight confines, and that, of course, precludes traffic. This is a section we've sort of come to call the carousel, working through turns six and seven, and now they get into the 90-degree right, 90-degree left, and exiting this turn here, Calvin, it's actually because they go up into a concrete canyon of some very tall buildings, but we'll go back to the front of the pack, and Kitchak and Archer are now into some lap traffic. There's the uh, car of Taylor, and here comes Cooper, and Biz, so far, they have to be pleased with this run for the new C5. Uh, he's having a great run. He's actually having the exact run he wants at this part of the race. He says, I can go faster. I've got to hold myself back. He wants to have it all together for the last 10 laps. This is the first time that C5 has been out. They're trying to learn on every single lap how to make it go faster. Look at the right side of the car, guys. The mirror's gone. He lost it on a wall. He's got to be trying hard even when he's holding back. Well, they're saving car cal, apparently that's tires and drive line, not body work. Yeah, I tell you, he wasn't holding back in that first corner when he tapped uh, Dorsey and took him out, but uh, that may have been when he actually tagged that mirror. We don't know that. He's been in close proximity with a lot of cars here today, and these street courses, you got to do that sometimes to force your way by. Sometimes that means you just got just the right distance from the apex, because it's concrete wall. That's right. Team managers sometimes like that. You come in, there's a few scratches on the car, and they say, well, at least you're trying out there. Here's the battle for fourth between Heinrichsee and Reese Cox, the 2C5. Go on board with Desiree Wilson, and she's heading down into the pits. The car is extremely hot. Red light is on. Well, obviously, it's pretty warm here anyway. The car's running quite uh, rough. A little bit of a vibration. Oh, they go right to the bodywork, take the uh, engine cover off, Calvin. Never a good sign. No, it is not, Greg, and that looks like Des's day may be done. Maybe they can get it back out there, but a great battle going on here. Here we see Roach in the Porsche again, and the BMW about to shot. Really hasn't made a move now. Maybe he's just biding his time, trying to keep a good car underneath him for the last half of the race. One of the things about this track is turn one, if you can do it right over that big bump, that's a good passing area in turn five. Otherwise, they're pretty few and far between. Look at this move as Upton trying to get inside Roach. As I said, Roach shuts the door. You've got to have a decisive move made, or that's going to happen. Well, Roach is having problems over that bump there, Greg. You see him really get loose with the Porsche under braking. I don't know if that's a rear brake bias problem with the car. Here we see our Dorsey Schrader going through the corner there. That bodywork's still trailing behind him, but uh, doesn't look like he's cut down a tire or anything, and he's doing a good job out there, but that Porsche is really under heavy pressure now. They see Upton, Shark coming down here. They're all in line right now, but this is going to get side by side here shortly, I'm sure. Through turn five, heading down to six and seven, which is really driven like one big turn. They turn in here and they don't stop really till the exit of seven. Oh, look at Upton trying to go down the inside of Roach, and he made it, but Roach has the inside for turn eight, and Upton cannot make that pass stick. But it was gutsy, classic Kermit Upton. Wow, and uh, he got a little offline there, looking to the inside and getting chopped. Really gives Shot an opportunity. So, it uh, didn't quite get the pass made, but as you pointed out, you've got to show the nose and harass him a little bit. Desiree Wilson down the pits, Biz is there. Well, Desiree Wilson is in the pits. He's she's talking with the crew chief, trying to figure out the electrics on the car. They've got the hood up but they can't find exactly where the misfire is. When she came in, the motor sounded just terrible, guys. She'll talk to us in just a second. Well, remember, too, they had the problem with the exhaust on that car, and they're just trying to sort through a host of problems right now. And Desiree, the only female to ever win a world a championship Formula One race. It wasn't a points race, but it was a legit Formula One race. That is one very talented driver, and she's having some problems right there. That was Dimitri running very slow, and doing a nice job of moving off to the side, letting your leader and the rest of the field cycle through. There's Cochran, and Archer dives down to the inside, sneaks by Bernie Cochran, but that hurt Archer a little bit. And 95, Dimitri has pulled off and parked. But as I said, uh, that just that little bobble, I think, hurt Archer. Yeah, really did. They're working traffic hard. Now, Kitchak got a much better run through the traffic than Bobby Archer did, and that's really pulled out a lead for Kitchak and taken the pressure off for now anyway. Now take a look at how dark it gets down in between the buildings here, those taillights on these cars. 
really glowing and that shadows we still got good sunlight it's just they run through a section here calvin right up into here the buildings are so tall and so close you really feel like you're running through a utah canyon and that's tough for these drivers you want to get in close proximity to these walls but when you're driving through the shadows like that it really makes it weird with your vision so these guys really got to be careful and cooper's in the pit damage to the left front oh we saw that before but it uh, didn't look like it was affecting him but suddenly he has stopped and you can see that the body work used up a little bit they've got the jack in the uh, stand into the car and they're getting it up in the air don't know exactly what the problem is you might suspect debris something like that causing a flat tire meanwhile peter kitchak serenely uh, continues to motor away and uh, there was archer there was walt swick going down a lap here's cochran and uh, there's peterson who we saw had the spin and you could see the margin that those two have opened up over Heinrich, who now finds himself with uh, Cooper in the pits. That's your new third place car. And he's doing a great job in that C5 van. I mean, really done a lot of development between, uh, you know, getting the car initially and bringing it in, into a race. But uh, here we're back in the pits now again. You can see damage to the left front, and uh, they're trying to get Cooper back on track. He's in the championship hunt. They've done some work to the car, and he's back out of there. Looked like they were addressing the left rear tire on that car, and uh, he's heading back out, but this is really going to hurt him in terms of track position and points. And there it goes. I think Kitchak just put him a lap down, and that's exactly what Cooper did. Whoa, a little, little squirrely there, and he's straight Whoa, into straight the up. runoff. Straight into the runoff, and I mean deep into the runoff down in turn one, and he's going to try and get it turned around, but uh, Cooper having some serious problems with that machine. Not can't say the same about Peter Kitchak. Serenely motoring on. We'll be back. Back to Grand Rapids, and what was the battle for seventh? Calvin is now the battle for six with Cooper's demise. It is, and Upton's really starting to put the pressure on that 911 in front of him now. That you see one of the back markers waving the battle through there. And uh, whoa, we talked about Roach having problems under braking again. He locks it up there, and we see a car in front. It's like a Mustang has put it in the tires. Tony DeMonte running a little wide, and uh, that's Nowak and another Mustang that got in there right behind him, really had nowhere to go. Well, it's so tight through some of these corners, it's blind as well. You come through there, and a uh, car in the way, no tire bundles in the way. So really <laughs> quite dramatic for these drivers as they try and negotiate this very tight street course. You mentioned those tire bundles in the way. That's right at the exit point of the corner, in a way. That could spell some problems. There's Peter Kitchak leading through turns two and three, which really has become a pretty quick chicane. I can't believe how nimble that Porsche looks coming around this street course. Let's take another look at the replay here. You see that white Mustang getting really wide under steering straight into the tires. And luckily, Roach came through there and just managed to sneak by along with Upton. And here's a look at Roach locking it up. And that was rear brake, so he's got a problem with the bias. That's what it looks like, the bumps and then a little bit too much rear bias. And uh, he may have seen that Mustang. Maybe he jumped on the brakes a little bit harder, saw the Mustang running wide, and that may have indicated why we saw the lockup. There's some battling also a little bit further deep in the pack. That is the number 27 machine right there of Rick DiOrio, who, of course, we saw play a very heavy role at Lime Rock. Very fast. Oh, and we're full course yellow. Yeah, Rick had a great run there at Lime Rock. That's his home track. He's a Skip Barber instructor there and had a great run, sat on the pole, led early and faded a little bit, and now we see our old man, Dorsey Schrader. Dorsey Schrader looking back from the onboard. Looks like we got a full course caution. And this is something I can use, I'll tell you. This car is very, very loose at the back. We've got understeer on the entry to the corner. we got a big brake problem, brake pedal going almost to the floor. I'm able to pump it up between corners so I can stay out here and keep driving. I have to suspect from the way things look that everybody's having a pretty hard race. The pace, the leaders are setting a pace that's very, very fast. And I can tell the bike tires are slipping and sliding. I can only imagine what everybody else is like. Dorsey and I were teammates in a Celine Mustang about 10 years ago, and those handling characteristics sound exactly the same. Well, while we're under the uh, caution, time for a little liquid replacement. <laughs> I like that. We are just past halfway here at the seventh round of the Speed Vision GT Championship in Grand Rapids. We are under full course yellow, the Celine Ford Mustang pace car leading the field around, but we expect to be going to green. That pace car is ducked into the pits, and Peter Kitchak, as he comes out of that final corner now, he has got to be concerned once again, Cal, with Archer and that launch, and Archer goes to the outside. 
Here comes that Viper V10 Power making the move to the outside, but Kuchak should be good on the brakes there in the Porsche. A little lighter car, and he safely tucks it in there, but Bobby's being very patient. He realizes he's in a championship battle. He doesn't want to do any rash moves right now, but he is certainly trying to harry Peter and put the pressure on. You see Kitchak coming out of that corner very sideways in the Porsche. Very crossed up, and Biz all may not be well with Kitchak. Well, Peter Kitchak was not happy to see that green come out. He has a problem with the throttle. The throttle is sticking from time to time wide open. I'll tell you guys, this is not the circuit to have any kind of throttle problems whatsoever. These walls don't move out of your way. Well, that explains why Kitchak suddenly got that car crossed up so bad out of the chicane. Wow, I don't know when it's coming on, whether it's when you're actually on the power for a long time and you just kind of trail out, or whether it's all of a sudden it just sticks down. But uh, Peter's doing a great job if he's having those sort of problems with the car. Very difficult for a driver when you have a problem that's not consistent. If it's consistent when it does it, you realize it's coming. But if it suddenly does it out of the ordinary, then you have a real trouble. You're in a walk quickly. And if Bobby Archer has sensed that, he's got to be really smacking his lips and sensing opportunity in a huge carambolage over here in turn eight. Peterson involved, Upton involved, Scotty White was trapped there as well into a parking lot. There goes the tsunami entry and uh, Nowak trying to find his way through Calvin. This is an absolute bottleneck and uh, there goes Peterson trying to get turned around. Well, it's almost impossible to get turned around. I tell you, if you didn't have reverse gear in one of these cars, you probably wouldn't be able to, but the seven cars are back underway. Let's take another look at the action here. Upton actually tagged the vet there, turned him around, shots in close proximity. He managed to somehow scrape by. I don't think he touched anyone. Then you see Roach coming through there in the Porsche. Another angle on it, and here we go. Kermit gets into there. Yeah, there goes Peterson. There's Shart. What, did he get lucky right there? White got trapped. Biscuit sneaks through. Let's go on board with Kermit here. Well, he just got down to the inside of that vet, turned him around. Then you see Shot turn and get his way around. On board with Biscuit. This is busy, guys. And there you see Shot just getting through in the yellow Toyota and Biscuit back on the power track and taking advantage of the situation. Upton has damage to the right side. Rear bumper there trailing and uh, he may be able to continue. Hopefully it won't cut down a tire. Right now it looks okay. Now it looks fairly cosmetic. Doesn't look like it's affecting the handling of the car. Of course, that's sort of the Ben-Hur chariot uh, <laughs> wheel chopper right there if he gets up next to somebody. But look at Kramer. It doesn't matter at all. He is just flogging that Bimmer in a hurry. He gives it 100% all of the time. He's a lot of fun to watch. You gotta wonder if he gets real close to an apex turning that way. If he doesn't hook that, that could come off and go scooting across the track and then maybe get into his or somebody else's tire. So it's a little bit dodgy. Meanwhile, Kitchak, boy, stick and throttle and all. Look at him pull away from Archer. Archer's sporting some new sponsorships. Sagestone, you see on the side. And WOOD Channel 8 TV, a local uh, Grand Rapids station jumping on board. Wise. Yeah, absolutely. He's leading the championship right now, and he's looking for his third win of the, vi of the season. See a battle for six right now. Biscop has really been able to take advantage of that traffic jam we saw, and he's now putting the pressure on Shot. Looking to the inside there. Looks like he's got a run at him. Good brakes on this Porsche. Gets it done. Nice job by George there, fighting the walls on the exit. Up to sixth, and he started 13th, so arguably he's having one of the great drives of this race. There's through six and seven again, that uh, sort of carousel. Closing on Bernie Cochran, and uh, we know we've been getting around Bernie quite a bit here, but we need to point out that that is not a full-out World Challenge spec car. They're developing that car on the go from a Motorola Cup showroom stock car, and Bernie really giving it a great run here. He really is. He's getting some experience, seeing what the competition's all about, and I'm sure he'll make a campaign either later this year or next, which will be a lot stronger than today. Biscuit ducks down to the inside now and is going to move by, and Bernie's been doing well. Look at that, Bernie got into that turn pretty quickly here now one would suspect on the launch out of 13 that this is where they're going to oh and dithier another off he's been involved in a couple and uh so he's going to get away with this one as well with minimal damage if any like upton was in the picture as well i'm not sure if those two came together here we see them heading down into turn one kitchen is out of problem he's slowing greg he's slowing and though he almost looked like maybe the car stumbled on him and he moved offline or something like that. Remember that sticking throttle. Uh, he may have had a problem with that as well. We'll have to watch for it. And watching for Archer. Here's what. Oh, and Kitchik, he looped it. Wow. And there and goes Archer. Oh, oh. oh. That was close. There you see from the onboard. Peter loses it. And here comes Archer. Look how sideways he is. He has to pinch the corner off. Almost got into the front of Kitchak's Porsche. 
and Peterson has had another problem as well on that roar machine, and now Kinchik finds himself sitting in second place, unfamiliar territory. It is, and uh, this thro sticking throttle may have been a factor there, coming out of the corner as you accelerate through the gears, may have just stuck on him a little bit. Boy, that corner right there with the sticking throttle has got to be fearsome. Peter Kitchak now has some work to do. We'll find out if he can do it in just a minute. Welcome back to Grand Rapids, Michigan in the Scott Braid Memorial Street Circuit. There went Archer. Here comes Kitchak. That is the margin between first and second. And the question is, oh, here's the lockup. Kitchak running a little wide there. And that usually is an indication that uh, if you have a stuck throttle, that can cause that because it doesn't get rid of speed quick enough. No, it's really tough. You're coming off the exit of these corners and you're trying to use throttle management and it suddenly sticks. You've got a big problem. You've got to understeer wide. Good battle for third and Reese Cox has gone around John Heinrichsy. And of course, that's an interesting story. Reese Cox has been developing that C5 at each race so far this year. Heinrichsy ran early in a, uh, in a Pontiac or, excuse me, a Camaro, then they parked it and have concentrated on that car. Having a good battle. Look who's right behind them in fifth. There's our man Dorsey starting to put the pressure on the Corvette boys. And uh, John Harnessy has a long-standing relationship with uh, Chevrolet and uh, been a test and development driver for them for many years. And I'm sure he's not going to bring the C5 out until he feels it's race ready. And today, putting on a great show. Currently running fourth. Been up in the top three for a while now. Of course, he's one of, as you said, one of the really the, uh, the creative engineers in the Corvette program and thus his close affiliation with that particular brand, let alone the uh, the uh, Chevrolet mark. And there is Dorsey. Again, we know that bodywork damage that you see in the back is just cosmetic, but uh, it's pretty remarkable. We talk about Kitchak having his throttle problems, uh, Dorsey having braking problems, and still able to deal with it, doing a nice job. And it looks like a time for a double pass, won't work. And if they keep messing around, guess who's going to go right by them? <laughs> Get in my sights, boys. And Biz Cooper has joined you in pit road. Billy Cooper has come back in the pits. It was very quick. It was a problem with the fuel pump. They switched some electrical lines down in the electronic box on the right-hand side of the cockpit, and he's back out of here. Now, remember, this is really the only, the second time this car has ever run. They've only went testing for one day. They've got to get it right for Vancouver and the rest of the season. Well, after the problems they had, it's now just a test day for them. That's good. And Calvin, look at Kitchak. He has caught Archer. In fact, he is going by Archer and has made the pass for the lead. Made for TV, we're ahead. Yes, sir. Good interplay between Kitchik and crew. And Peter Kitchik is your new leader, and he ran down Archer in a remarkably short period of time. He really did. Bobby was on the brakes for a long time there when Peter went by, as if he's got a problem, because look at the gap already Peter has pulled out on Archer. Now Archer may have a problem. He's on the brakes for a long time going into that corner, so maybe some handling problems on the Viper. Also, no, oh, and he's got a flat right front tire. I saw a little bit of smoke, and he is coming straight down in the pit lane and right towards you, Biz. Well, we are here, and he is coming in with all brakes locked up. He has some damage on that right front. The wheel is broken, and the tire is coming off the wheel totally. Actually, he has damage all the way down the whole right side. Part of the body's falling off. They're trying to get the rear fender lifted so they can get the jack underneath the car. This is just terrible. He has this race in hand. Remember the track is getting very, very slippery. Obviously he made big contact with the wall. Oh, and Biz Dorsey has had another go round down in turn one. And Calvin, I noticed they could with that flat tire. They, oh, let's go back and take a look at what happened to Dorsey first of all. Oh, he just loses it under braking. It looked like there, Greg. No one behind him. He didn't get tagged. Just a little late on the brakes. He said the pedal had been going to the floor and obviously had a bit too much uh, rear bias there as he did try and get slowed down for the corner and done the Zanardi Donuts to get back underway. All right, great recovery. Whoa, and Kellemeyer involved in Scotty B. White as well. Two C5s. One of the Bimmers sneaks through. You can see some serious damage now to the left front corner of White's car. Wow, and he struggled there to keep it off the wall there. The bodywork may be stopping him from getting full lock on that machine, even though he's actually damaged the tow link, not getting full steering effect. See him there fighting with the wheel. And wow, this is really under control there. He's got a big problem. That is completely broken, the left front suspension. About the only thing holding that wheel on is a tie rod in the lower link. The top is gone. 
Watch this now. If he gets any kind of look at that tire hunting around. There, that the top is disconnected completely. I'd say his day is done. They're not going to fix that in a hurry. There's a lot of damage to the left front corner of that machine, and uh, pretty dangerous situation. It'll suddenly turn on you in a hurry. And Archer's back out there. They eventually did get the car jacked up and got that right front tire on. And it looks like Biz said they had some damage to the right side. He probably ran a little too close to one of these walls and uh, damaged that right front tire. Well, that tire, if it if he had scraped it a few laps earlier and it damaged the valve stem or, uh, stem or something, that may explain why Kitchak was able to reel him in that quickly if the handling was going off that bad. Now Archer is in danger of going a lap down to your race leader, Peter Kitchak, and this is exactly what Kitchak wanted in terms of the season points championship. He's closing in there as well. Welcome back to Grand Rapids, and here you get a good look at Dorsey Schrader, who is now in third spot, spinning off, having a good run. Look at the move in the back by Biscop. He slices down another of the cars. There's Heinrichsy, and Biscop. remember, he qualified 13th, and he is marching now right into the top five. He's doing a great job. The Porsches are looking strong here today. The circuit obviously suits them very well. Got a very light car, good brakes, and that's what you need on a street circuit. Now here's Dorsey after that spin. He quickly caught Heinrichsy and just laid that pass on him, heading down into turn one. And uh, Dorsey having a great comeback drive, but Kitchak strong out front. I'm not front. sure we could get there, David. We're just nursing for everything it's worth. Man, I well, obviously, Kitchak feels he's used that car up just a little bit and is really soft-pedaling it right now, but he's got a lot of ground at this stage. Here's that turn 13, and look at the aim right toward that pit wall. That is a booty corner. It is. Down the long front straightaway now, down towards turn one, maximum speed on this circuit, and there's a big bump. They're on their final lap. You see the white flag out in the background there. Kitchak rides the bump there down into turn one. And here we see the cars coming down. Second place car right there. Yeah, Reese Cox, this is going to easily be his best finish of the year. And they have continued to try and develop that, that C5 at the racetrack. And sometimes that's tough. But finally, it all seems to be coming good for Reese Cox. A great drive. It really is. And we believe our Dorsey Schrader's in third spot. But meanwhile, we're looking at the leader once again, Peter Kitchak. Looking to just try and bring it home to the checkered flag. He's nursing this baby right now. They realize they're in a points chase. Archer's hit problems, and uh, they're trying to capitalize on that. Well, these street tracks take it out of you, not just the driver, but it certainly can use a car up. And, uh, yeah, he's well off of what he was running in terms of outright pace, giving himself right now, Calvin, a lot of margin to the walls, to the apex, to the track out, being very careful. But we've seen it before with the best in the business, not to say Peter isn't that, but when you saw like try and back it off too much, you can lose your concentration. Now well, Peter just trying to bring her home. Boy, there is stuff laying all over this track. Turbochargers, taillights, you name it, it's out there. Well, that's the kind of debris you don't want to get into. And here he comes, last time through 13. There's the checker out of the right side of the windshield. Peter Kitchak adds another win to the books, Calvin. And with Archer's problems, is doing a, a, himself a huge favor in points to the Titan Twisty confines. Biscop trying to run down Heinrichsy and maybe slide through for fourth. One last chance here. And it's going to be Grunt versus Exit Speed and Grunt takes it as the Corvette holds on to fourth. Biscop, though, from 13th, has got to be very, very happy with the run to fifth, but nobody happier than Peter Kitchak. We'll visit with him in just a minute. Reese Cox, when everyone else was having huge problems, you kept it together for your first podium finish. Congratulations. Man, I'm so elated for the new C5 Corvette. It's, it's been a long road of development. We were the first ones out here, and... Uh, a consistent run was what was absolutely required today. Just sit there and run, try to co run consistent near qualifying times, the whole race, and my C5, MTI Racing has finally got this car down to where it's reliable and durable enough to go the distance. And today, a reliable run got us a second place and my best finish ever. Well, it was more than a reliable run. It was the driver inside the car that brought it home. And Biz, he truly did a great job. Let's take a look at our provisional results. Peter Kitchak wins it. Boy, the momentum is in his corner. Cox, a great drive to second. Schrader, solid drive to third. Heinrichsy, the debut there. Biscop, 13th to fifth. Good run. Interestingly, we look a little further back in the pack. Bobby Archer came back to ninth, but that's hurting him in the points big time. 
and we'll take a look at the rest of our finishing order here. And uh, there's some of the crowd that's on hand here, always strong here. And Dorsey Schrader was entertaining, it was fun, and it was eventful. It was fun, I got hit in turn one, spun around, and you know, got going again, and the brakes failed. I waited and dialed something to the front and let it cool down, and tires went off, sat back, ran at the end, and got up to third. So I learned a lot. I tell you what, these guys work hard for a living. Well, you can see the points now, Bobby Archie holds on, but it's a now tenuous lead as Kijak slices it from 18 points all the way down to four. Biscuit, another good run, and Cooper, he didn't score many points today either. Calvin, yeah, we look at the manufacturer's points battle. Forces so stretches it out, and Peter Kitchak's been the main reason for that. Peter Kitchak, what a great drive. You recovered for that spin to come back to win over the Viper. We really dodged the bullet that time. Uh, we were very, very lucky. I guess Bobby got a flat tire, and our car ran just great. The guys prepared the car really well, and what can I say? It was. Could you have caught the Viper if you didn't have problems? Absolutely. Well, I have plenty of confidence down here, guys. And the car is in perfect shape for Vancouver. And you said it, Biz. Next race is Vancouver. Another street circuit, and Peter Kitchak has that precious momentum on his side. Make sure you join us for our coverage on Speed Vision from Vancouver and Calvin. Peter Kitchak's run has just been remarkable. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. Three victories this season now. He's going to look strong. He's going to give out to a lot of pressure as we head to the final races. The championship battle is afoot. It's going to be great. Make sure you join us for all of the rest of the races here in Speed Vision. For Calvin, Connie, and Biz, I'm Greg Kramer. Thanks for joining us. Take care.